Everybody put your hands together for Grace, everyone. Grace. Hi, I'm Grace. Um, I had been coming to the, I haven't thought this through because they were begging people to get up and talk, so I haven't really thought out my story. I wasn't going to tell one. I've never told one before. But I'd, been, I'd started coming kind of regularly to this. I was very much enjoying it. But then I had to take a break in the summer because um, my mother was dying. She was on hospice care and uh, at home. So I, I am a, I'm self-employed, which means I'm a freelancer. So I can, um, you know, I work from home. So I was able to relocate my work from a, a bedroom, extra bedroom in my house to my mother's home in Southern Chester County. Um, which I did. So uh, um, I moved, essentially moved to Oxford, if anybody knows Oxford, um, for the work week. And then I would come back to Lansdowne where I live on the, on the weekends. Uh, and I did that for about uh, 10 weeks. She died on August 4th, so she died about six weeks ago. Um, but the other reason I told the story, I decided to tell a story, besides that they're begging for it, is that my mother got some real zingers in on her deathbed, um, which <laughs> I want to give her credit for saying, because uh, really, you know, deathbed burns. Who, 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 do, who doesn't want those to live on beyond them? But the best thing she said to me, I was, so I was there every day while my siblings were working, and, you know, I just set up a little table in the corner of her room, and, um, you know, in the beginning she was able to be up and around a little, and then as the summer wore on, she was confined, not confined, but she just couldn't get out of her, her bed, and then eventually she was in a hospital bed. And I had a, um, a card table set up in the room with my computer, and I was sitting there with her all day, and Food Network was going in the background. I've seen every episode of Pioneer Woman. Um, and, uh, you know, I would try and engage her in talking, but she, she didn't have a lot to say. She was, you know, not so happy about this dying business. She was pretty bored by it. Um, it's true. It's true. She doesn't want to talk. A lot sometimes I just say, Mom, do you want to, anything you want to talk about? Not really. Um, but this one day I got her, you know, I was just there to help her with whatever she, whatever she needed help with and to spend time with her. And um, this one day I did some small thing for her. You know, I got her a glass of water or something. And um, also, as the summer wore on, she was getting a little farther from, um, you know, solid mentally. She was getting a little more adult. The things that would come out of her were, were um, didn't necessarily make sense. So this one morning, I, you know, was working and, you know, she never asked for anything. I would have to say, you know, what, do you want something to eat? Do you want some water? Do you want some, you know, coffee, whatever? And I think I got her a glass of water. And I brought it back to her and gave it to her, sat back down, was working again, and after a few minutes she said, Grace, sometimes you're nicer than I think you are. <laughs> and I, I said, I got up, I remember I got up and I went and sat on the bed and I took her hand and I said, did you just say, sometimes I'm nicer than you think I am? And she said, yes. And I said, Mom, don't you think I'm nice? And she said, sometimes you are. And she totally had a bead on me, and that was my story. <laughs> so, so I sat down on my computer, and I'm like, you will never believe what my mother just sent to me. And I said, I don't know what to people know. <laughs> And that's my story. <laughs>